Let's start our contracts by reviewing how to set up an all-inclusive contract. This is the simplest contract you could set up in Element Time because it really requires very little tracking. Um, you can track more than you need to track, and we'll get into that a little bit, but you don't really need anything. It's an all-inclusive contract, so we don't need to get too detailed in our tracking. Assuming you've set up your job, I'm going to jump right to the tasks. And on the tasks in my sample, I've kept it really simple. If I have a driver who does the plowing, the salting, and maybe even the walks all as one, then you only really need one task. I don't like to break my tasks up too much. I don't want to expect my driver, you know, when he's plowing, he's got that. And as soon as he turns the salter on, he's got to reach for his phone to switch tasks and write down the time. It doesn't make a lot of sense and it probably won't be very accurate. Your drivers will probably make that information up anyway. So you might as well just group it all together. So that's what I've done here. I just kept it really simple, plowing and salting. Now, if you did have a sort of a larger job, and maybe you've got some dedicated crews, uh, again, like a sidewalk crew, then by all means, we can set up another uh, task called walks um, and have that in there. And that way, when the when the staff get to site, they can choose, are you plowing and salting or are you working on the walks, one, one or the other. But um, that's really, I, re I really want to keep my tasks fairly simple. On the rate side, I don't need any hourly rates because it's an all-inclusive contract. So unless I've got a line item that's billed by the hour over and above the contract, then I don't need to set up any hourly rates here. So you can skip this. Activities are useful. So even if the contract is all-inclusive, you may find it very valuable to track when you did a salt application and possibly even how much salt you used when you did those applications. So even though this is an all-inclusive contract, I'm still going to set up a couple of activities so that I can keep a, a record of when we did salting. So I'll, cl I'll click Add Activities. Now I've got some set up already. If you don't, you can click Add New and you can set them up now on the fly. Um, if I scroll down here, there's two tasks that I want to track. I want to track whether we did an application of salt on the lots and whether we did an application of salt on the walks. So two different tasks I'm tracking here. This checkbox column here is whether we want to um, track the quantity or not. So for walks, I've got that on because I may very well want to track how many bags did we use when we were there. The application I also have on, and this is up to you. If you just want to track application, then that's all I need to do. I don't need a quantity because an app is an app. If you want to give the crews the flexibility to say they did half an app or one and a half apps or two apps at the same uh, in one pass, then you want to turn that on and that way it'll give them that opportunity. The default will be one, but they could change it to half an app in the case where they put down a light salting. Now over here's the billing information, but if this is an all inclusive contract, then these two should be set to no bill, not billable. I don't need to track any billing information for this and I'll click OK. So it'll load it up and there's my activities now. And let's take a look at what the crews would see then when they're clocking in under this job. So when they clock in under the timesheet, they're going to click add a task and they're going to pick that all inclusive snow sample that we set up there. Click next. They'll pick the people that are in their crew that day. And then now they're going to pick the task. So I have a choice of two tasks, plowing and salting or walks. I'll pick the task that I'm working on and then hit next. It takes the date and the time next. And now I am clocked into that task. Now, when I'm done that task, I'm going to clock into my next uh, activity, whether it's drive time or whether it's the next site, depends on what you're doing. So I'll click next. Next, we're plowing and salting at the next site. It's asking me notes about the next site. I'm clocking now into the next site. And now because it, I, it knows I've clocked out of the last job, it's asking me, what did you do when you were there? So we, did you salt? And if so, how many applications did we put down? So 0 0.5 is the right way to put in half an application. And did you salt the walks? And how many bags did we put down? And maybe we put down two and a half bags. So I'll put that at two and a half. Task notes would be what happened when you were there. Oh, there was two cars in the lot. Or we could just write OK if it was all clear. And the weather notes will populate automatically with the weather that's closest uh, the, from the weather station report that's closest to the phone. Obviously, I'm not in the winter season filming this video, but that's where it's pulling this information. It's grabbing it from the weather station uh, nearest to the phone at that time. I can add notes to this if I want, or I can modify this note if I want, uh, but it is in there automatically, some, some quick and simple. So they click Save. That's it. So when they clock into the job, 
they're going to choose between one of these two tasks. What are you doing when you're there? When they clock out of the job, it's also going to prompt them. If you've set up any activities, it's going to prompt them. Uh, what did you do when you were there? And then they can set that up. And that's it. That's how to set up an all-inclusive contract in Elementor.